People are starting to smell, and their teeth are beginning to rot out of their jaws, and it's all thanks to grifters online who sell ineffective products, scaring consumers into buying them by spreading medical misinformation. Over a century ago, antiperspirants containing aluminum salts and toothpaste containing fluoride were invented to stop sweat and body odor and prevent cavities. Decades of research have indicated that these active ingredients are safe and effective, and dermatologists and dentists overwhelmingly agree that aluminum salts and fluoride in toiletries pose no serious health concern to those who use them. Despite this, there are countless posts online claiming that aluminum-containing antiperspirants will give you breast cancer and Alzheimer's, and that toothpaste-containing fluoride will poison you and lower your IQ. None of these claims are true, but I want to examine why people continue to spread myths about these products and where all this nonsense originated from. The use of aluminum salts and antiperspirants began at the turn of the 20th century, when the first antiperspirants hit the shelves of drugstores. In the 1910s, antiperspirant was popularized by Edna Murphy, the daughter of a surgeon whose clever marketing strategies introduced the product to American consumers. The product was created by her father, who formulated it to stop his hands from sweating during surgery. Just like modern antiperspirants, the active ingredient was an aluminum salt. Aluminum salts and antiperspirants work by blocking the sweat ducts in the underarms and or chemically preventing them from producing sweat. Sweat. Once the patent expired and the aggressive ad campaigns targeting women's insecurities proliferated, antiperspirants were widely used by the mid-20th century. Debate about the safety of antiperspirants containing aluminum salts began almost immediately. As early as 1913, the American Medical Association warned that odorona was dangerous because its ingredients decomposed into muriatic acid and irritated the skin, and the aluminum it contained would clog the pores. Their concerns were somewhat warranted. Odorono contained very high concentrations of aluminum chloride, and some reportedly developed skin ulcers after using it. Since its invention, advancements in the chemical formulation of antiperspirants have made them much safer to use. Today's antiperspirants containing aluminum salts can still be problematic for a small percentage of people, though. In some cases, they can cause dermatitis or cutaneous granulomas, which certainly aren't fun side effects, but will not kill you. Besides these potentially unpleasant adverse reactions to the active ingredients in antiperspirants, they are effective and widely considered to be safe. A century of research and development creating safe antiperspirants has been flushed down the toilet by the invention of the internet, and disinformation campaigns began long before the invention of TikTok. One of the first big myths about antiperspirants dates back to the dial-up days of the 1990s, where an email hoax claimed that they caused breast cancer. Ever since some internet charlatans spread that big fat lie, doctors have been scrambling to debunk it for over 30 years. This is a case of a lie that traveled round the globe before the truth could pull up its trousers. Though experts have thrown around potential mechanisms for a link between breast cancer and antiperspirant use, none hold up to scrutiny. Some studies with puny sample sizes have drawn a shaky, dotted, and tortuous line between antiperspirant use and breast cancer, but much larger studies have cast serious doubts on this alleged link. The American Cancer Society has a great page on their website about antiperspirants and cancer, which thoroughly addresses concerns many people have about antiperspirants containing aluminum. It's hard to even imagine how topical applications of aluminum could adversely affect any part of your body other than the skin, considering how little aluminum is likely absorbed through the use of antiperspirant. The American Cancer Society points out that you absorb more aluminum from your diet than what you could conceivably absorb from antiperspirant use. Though developing breast cancer is not a concern when it comes to using aluminum antiperspirant, you may have heard that there is a potential link between aluminum exposure and Alzheimer's disease. When it comes to antiperspirant use specifically, there is no damning evidence of this purported link at all. 
Anyone claiming this who is kind enough to cite sources, links to studies, for instance, about exposure to aluminum in drinking water and other loosely related papers with dubious conclusions. Even if consumption of copious amounts of aluminum does indeed result in a higher chance of developing Alzheimer's later in life, doctors don't take this concern too seriously when it comes to antiperspirant use because people aren't ingesting it. I'm sure there are many other claims about the terrible effects of antiperspirant floating around, but I'm not going to play a game of whack-a-mole here trying to debunk every last myth. Besides, debunking misinformation doesn't work. Confronted with the testimony of experts and peer-reviewed studies going against their false beliefs, people tend to dig in their heels rather than change their minds. I've made my point, and I hope someone who was on the fence about all this has found this video educational in some way. But when it comes to those who avoid aluminum-containing antiperspirants for no medical reason whatsoever and believe falsehoods in the face of evidence to the contrary, I think being ostracized for smelling bad is far more effective at changing someone's mind. If people think you're a stinky weirdo for using natural antiperspirants, social pressures like that are infinitely more persuasive than some YouTuber blabbing about how you don't release toxins in your underarm sweat and therefore aluminum antiperspirants can't prevent that from happening. Um, speaking of natural antiperspirants, the term is somewhat controversial. First of all, they are actually natural deodorants. They aren't effective at reducing underarm sweat, and proper antiperspirants pretty much always contain aluminum salts and are regulated as over-the-counter drugs by the FDA. Additionally, as Dr. Dre, the other Dr. Dre, points out in her video, the term natural is not regulated in advertising at all, and natural deodorant means nothing. While I am just a random YouTuber and you should take whatever I say with a grain of aluminum salt, she is a board-certified dermatologist and her opinion of natural deodorants is that they not only don't work, but they often contain ingredients that are far worse for your underarms than aluminum, including baking soda and essential oils. She comes across as frustrated and completely fed up, and I think I know why. I'm positive she is constantly seeing nonsense videos spreading misinformation, like this dude who claims you shouldn't use certain antiperspirants because aluminum is a neurotoxin that is dangerous to apply to the skin frequently. If you use deodorant like these, here's why you've got to change it for your health. Let me explain. These contain aluminum. Aluminum is a neurotoxin. You put it under your arms, it absorbs through your skin. So we don't want long-term aluminum use. The more videos like that one you encounter, the more you start to notice a pattern. People who are spreading health misinformation always seem to be peddling something. Many of these kinds of videos literally have TikTok shop links affixed to them. My armpits are in people's faces all day and this is what I use. Ever since my mom got breast cancer four years ago, I stopped using deodorants that have aluminum in it. Saltaire came out with a deodorant that has 5% acid. Why would she mention her mother's breast cancer diagnosis? That's completely unrelated to aluminum containing antiperspirant use, as I hope we now all know unless she's implying something that is unsupported by available evidence to sell that product. That would be a despicable sales tactic. I hope that wasn't her intention, because for every person she sends down the path of stinkiness and regret, she gets around a dollar in commission. I guess that's how much someone's dignity is worth these days. I haven't even touched upon the lunacy of fluoride-free toothpaste yet. Fluoride is the active ingredient in toothpaste that makes it work. It's safe and effective, and any suggestion of potential adverse effects of its use in both toothpaste and drinking water has been studied to death. Literally hundreds of thousands of participants have been observed in these studies, and it's time to put the nonsense about it lowering IQ and turning the frogs gay to rest. It's a travesty of public health that two states this year have eliminated the addition of fluoride in their drinking water, considering that it has dramatically reduced rates of tooth decay in millions of children over the decades. It says a lot that people are more worried about whispers of single-digit IQ point reductions in widely criticized and flawed studies and not their teeth rotting out of their skull. 
Part of me wants to say that if you believe fluoride makes you dumb, you probably have nothing to worry about. Of course, that's a tad crass, and no one is immune to propaganda, but it's so frustrating to watch decades of progress be erased in the blink of an eye. To top it all off, this suspicion of fluoride is being used to sell us unnecessary crap, like $30 toothpaste that relies on fluoride alternatives. There's no point in buying this product unless you believe in misinformation. Fluoride is the gold standard for reducing your risk of developing cavities and promoting remineralization of your teeth, and can be found in a tube of Crest that costs $2.39. I don't think there is any possible way to justify that exorbitant price, as I sincerely doubt the expensive toothpaste is 12 times better at caring for your teeth. Though I've talked extensively about aluminum-free deodorants in this video, I would argue that the fluoride-free alternative toothpaste industry is infinitely worse. Ineffective antiperspirants just aren't as dangerous, in my opinion, as total hacks have been cooking up remedies for body odor for years, and normally the worst that happens is someone ends up smelling bad and everyone around them has to endure it. Ineffective toothpaste can cause far more harm. Some high-profile natural brands, which were purported to be infinitely superior to regular drugstore brands, have faced legal action against them because of claims that their toothpaste destroyed people's teeth. Because of the damage snake oil toothpaste can do to the mouth, I think toothpaste should be regulated with the same gravity as the label antidepressant. This is an unfortunate side effect of dentistry being considered separate and less vital than other kinds of healthcare in the US. I don't think regulators would be as lax if some companies started labeling sugar pills as antibiotics. Whether it's deodorant that makes you stink or toothpaste that will rot your teeth, ineffective products advertised as natural and better for one's health have taken over a large segment of the toiletries market. Behind this invasion of products that don't work onto the shelves of every drugstore is a multi-billion dollar grift that relies on misinformation to sell junk to unknowing consumers. If these products work for you, that's all right, but know that there are risks, from simply smelling bad to serious tooth decay. Though I can't speak for everyone's specific situation, there's often no good reason to use ineffective products over regular ones that actually work. The science is pretty clear. Aluminum-containing antiperspirants and toothpaste with fluoride in it are perfectly fine to use. And even after poring over the details, I will continue to use my crusty tube of regular old Crest and industrial strength Old Spice aluminum antiperspirant. This natural stuff is propaganda I'm not falling for. Anyways, I'm Robert Tolpe, and if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye!